How dare they? Hmm? How dare they patronise ordinary folk who are struggling to pay their mortgage now? Since interest rates have been going through the roof, you might have heard they have gone up another quarter of a percent yesterday to five point two five percent Well, people's mortgage deals are come up for renewal and they're starting to flood it in. I read this morning's one poor lass, well she reckons she's gonna finish her off. Her mortgage renewal has gone up to £2,000 a month from 1200 Another guy, he phoned up on LBC Radio to speak to Richie Sunak. Yeah, his has gone up to 2800 He's got a family of four. He's already got a 35-year deal, but Richie Sunak says, well, extend it. That's not an answer. I'm sorry. It's not an answer at all. I don't know what he can do, to be fair. That's not an answer. Well... Another moron, sorry, I just say it as I see it. The Pret a Manger, you know, what's, what's it like, Ready Meals, is it? Ready Eat. <laughs> Pret a Manger founder, he's now the It2 uh, CEO. Well, he wants people to stop whinging and whining. Yeah, stop complaining about interest rates as though it's the end of the world. Well, if you're about to lose your home, hmm? the home that you've struggled to pay already under this environment that we're living under, you know, the economic crisis and all that and then this is hitting them increased interest rates on the uh, mortgages mortgage deals become more expensive of course they're flipping concerned where's the empathy man for christ's sake do these people actually care about anyone else well probably not actually because they're rolling in cash Fishy soon for instance is net worth is just shy of a billion what we know of that is how much money has he got, you know, in this blind trust overseas? Makes you wonder, doesn't it, eh? Well, so we've seen roaring inflation and the bank's response has been to increase interest rates. That's the normal thing to do, but as I said before, it hasn't had the effect as it has had in other countries and in the EU because of Brexit. I'm sorry, but, you know, if you're hell-bent on sucking up to be, you know, to Brexit, you know, a Brexit sycophant, well then... Quite frankly, you need to wake up. You really do need to wake up to it because it's just this is just madness. And I'm reading this article in the Fortune. <laughs> Seems apt, doesn't it? Eh? Now, he says, Mr. Metcalf, the CEO of uh, Itsu. He says, I was in worse days. Yeah, when Met, uh, when he first launched a uh, Pret Manger back in the 1980s, he says, before the era of free movement within Europe began. Interest rates were much higher. Hmm. So before freedom of movement was a thing, interest rates were much higher. Are you trying to tell me that freedom of movement brought the interest rates down? Well, it stabilised our economy because we had the people. We need people to have a stable economy because we need to be able to function. We need efficiency to produce, to provide services, etc. Now, as the years after, <laughs> after Brexit, has been formalised. Has it really? No, it's not. No, it's not. Brexit's not done. No, they just kicked the can down the road yet again. No import checks coming into the UK. We don't know when that's going to happen, though. They got rid of the CE mark. Oh, oh well, they were going to. They were going to replace it with the UK CA mark, but then they decided just this week to uh, hold on to it. Doesn't help that much, because you still can't export. You've got to get your stuff tested in the EU well now he says that everyone's complaining about 5% interest rate before they went up yesterday and it's the as though it's the end of the world well, it is if you're about to lose your flipping home you moron that's what he told um, Bloomberg in the podcast that was released on Thursday back then he said I remember when we paid 14% now I have brought this up before they were different times. We didn't have terrace houses costing two hundred and six. Um, like in Norwich, for instance, two hundred and sixty thousand pounds for a tiny old workman's house, a like tied house, well, the weaver houses and what have you in Norwich. Yeah, the old terrace houses, two up, two down, tiny little things, or maybe a toilet extension on the back. Tiny homes, they really are. And they're fetching 250 to 260 pounds, thousand pounds. 
They would have been about five hundred pounds in their day when my parents bought the house. Maybe less, three, five hundred, something. Like that. My dad, when he bought his house, it cost nine hundred pounds. Now, with inflation as it is, it's not relative. It's actually, it should be a quarter of what it actually is. That two hundred and sixty thousand pound house should be around seventy thousand pounds, for instance. 70 to 80 or something like that. But no, with house price inflation being above inflation for many years. Now, it was 15% last year, house price inflation, because money was cheap and people were buying properties that really they couldn't really afford in reality, in case interest rates go up. They're, so they managed to buy properties which are too expensive. The only way they could really go, eventually, as they peaked, was down. And properties are getting to a point where they peaked. With everything that's going on in the United Kingdom at the moment, properties have peaked. Here in the EU, properties actually starting to increase in value again. Well, actually, they didn't actually really stop increasing in value, just slowed down a bit. Don't get me wrong, it's not comparable with the UK's 15%, nowhere in there. Which was ridiculous. No wonder how people have been priced out of the market. People couldn't get their foot on the ladder. It's so unfair. And this idiot here is trying to tell us, oh, interest rates were 14%. Of course they were 14%. Well, that's not, that wasn't the issue. The issue, for us, the, issue, the issue for us now is that house prices are way too high. They're too expensive. They're not actually worth what we're paying for them. Land is way too expensive. Here in France, for instance, I'll give you the idea. Land here, you could... Okay, build... Oh, here, dogs in the background. A <laughs> building plot. Uh, here, you'd, you'd pick up a building plot for 15 to £20,000. You don't... Euro, sorry, in France. You're not going to do that in... No, you're not going to do that in the UK, are you? You'll be lucky. Agricultural land is about 1,000 to 1,500 euros per hectare. Will you get that? Agricultural land in the UK for that sort of money? No. I know what I pay for at this place. We should plant the trees we are. Lots of flipping trees. I like trees. All right. Anyway. So he's the founder of the two companies and said that the operating in the, in the restaurant business has gotten increasingly harder, especially recently, and everything has gone up in price. So he's going on about food uh, inflation, right? But then he also goes on, about, oh, well, I'll get to that in a minute, actually. So, so since COVID, we're, when you go out to a restaurant, it's frighteningly expensive now because everything's more expensive. It isn't necessarily because of COVID. It's because, well, obviously the fact we can't get the labour. Labour's becoming more expensive. So, you know, that, that's obviously the, the customer has to pay for that cost. But food has also become very, very expensive. All the ingredients have gone up in price, haven't they? So he said, but, you know, passing on the increased cost to the customer. Well, that's, that's inevitable eventually. So prices in the UK have skyrocketed with inflation stand at the moment. It's come down a little bit now to 7.9%. It's still way higher than the US and way higher than the EU. But even Germany's, well, Germany's held relatively high, just shy of what the UK is. But it's actually come down quite rapidly now in Germany. But let's be fair, they were getting all their energy from Russia. That's, that's obviously going to be a recipe for disaster at some point. I think that was a little foolhardy, if you ask me. Russia's too volatile. Now, while the number is down from 8.7%, that was back in May when interest rate, uh, inflation was 8.7%, the rate is still well above the Bank of England uh, 2% target. Now, let's just get something straight here. Just because in, the uh, inflation has come down, don't mean to say stuff has come down in price. Then it just means it's, it's not growing in, in price quite as fast. But wages haven't caught up. People's wages are, all ha are, are below... Inflation, way below inflation levels. In fact, they're stagnant, especially in civil servants. And if you talk about doctors and nurses and what have you, George Osborne did his wicked, wicked, had his wicked way and froze people's wages, didn't he? You know, and now they're, they're all crying out. So, hang on, we want our money back. They feel, they feel like they've been done over. You know, during COVID, how do we reward them? We clapped like a flipping seal. Uh, Patronising. That wasn't showing solidarity. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 you were encouraged to do this. But the only reason why you were clapping like a seal is because the government was encouraging you to do so because the government didn't want to pay any more money. They, want, 
and increase our wages, they'll hold them down, suppress them. That's what I do with all of us, to be honest. Well, I escaped to France. So there he is, he's saying food inflation has come down a little bit as well. So he's saying here that early signs that prices are cooling in June. Food prices were 17.3% compared to 18.3% uh, in uh, when was it? May. In May. Now, while uh, restaurant inflation dropped from 10.3% to 9.5% during the same period. Like I said, it doesn't mean it becomes cheaper. No. The food has already increased in price by whatever it was, 20-odd percent food inflation, argument's sake. I don't mean to say it's going to come down 20% um, to that, you know, no, it just means it's not going to grow as fast. So everything's still going to be expensive. Food inflation would have to be in the negatives for the prices to come down. And generally speaking, what should be happening is your wages should be increasing to cope with inflation, but there hasn't been, and uh, as a result, everybody is feeling of a pinch. Now, many people when they bought their houses when they were cheap, with this uh, fifteen odd percent house price inflation. Well, needless to say, they've made a lot of equity. But it's only good if, for instance, you've got no debt. If you've got to go buy one house and you know sell one house to buy another, that other house you buy is probably going to be expensive as well. So you're not you're not really on a win, you know. Many people will use that equity to be able to increase their mortgages, to borrow against it, so they can put extensions on or stuff like that, you know, home improvements and stuff. Before you know, you got even more debt, more debt. You basically all the money that you might have accrued in your equity in your property that's grown in value or the fact you paid off some of your mortgage well then you go and spend it again effectively on a new kitchen maybe or a car just clear it against the house you see secured debt it's dead cert for that the, you know, the people with the money the lenders isn't it so anyway you tell me um what the hell are we going to do about this how the hell are we going to bring house prices down to that manageable level Without hurting people. It's not possible, is it? I feel we need a reset. I really do feel we need a reset. I think it's, an, it's the only way now. But loads of people will... Sadly, be, will suffer as a result. But you know who won't be suffering? It's the rich buggers who are telling us not to worry. We're on it. Such as Richie Sunak, who's got all, who has all his money squirrelled away. They earn more money, more money, and more money. Money makes money. These people just will keep their traps shut and just do the job that they've been voted in to do. Instead of just making stupid videos. At funny angles. So it makes them look bigger. Yeah. With crazy boots. Tiny body. I'll show you, I don't put socks in his boots. That's what he does. A second pair of socks. <laughs> might not be the best analogy, but yeah, two pairs of socks. One to take up the space in the ends of his boots, in his clown boots. There's something going on here, I'll tell you something. There's, we can get all conspiratorial and all that. I'm not really, I'm not really a conspiracy, it's conspiracy theory. I, I like logic. But um, these people are just sucking the country dry, and uh, everyone is having to pay the price, unfortunately. Problem is, people don't seem to want to, uh, don't want to wake up to it. No. That's why I say we need a reset. So you can sideswipe all these people in Parliament. Just get rid of a lot of them. The French had the right to do it, didn't they? Best, you know, stick them all in the Bastille. Or whip off it, you know. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Please leave in the comments down below. Oh, it does really worry me, because I'm worried about my family as well, you see. They've got mortgages. And uh, it's deeply, deeply concerning. You know. My daughter, who's here at the moment, with my grandchildren. they currently got a council house. Ken earns really good money. Still not enough to buy a house, though. No. It's kind of waiting years. Waiting for the prices to crash. Which could happen. Anyway, you tell me. Please leave it in the comments down below. If you want to support the channel, do a Patreon or buy us a coffee. And the links are down below. There they are. So, personally, if you're concerned, you've got a right to be concerned and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. 
And comparing it with like the, like the 70s and the 80s and what have you is ridiculous. There's no sense in it. Houses prices have increased exponentially and not relative to your wages. No, it, you know, wage inflation. Not at all. Anyway, ta-ta. Have a lovely day.